Hello everyone, and today we are going to talk about non-intrusive load monitoring by using deep learning. And my topic is a dual input multi-label classification approach for non-intrusive load monitoring via deep learning. I am Halil Chiman, and if you are interested, this is the, my email address. Now this is the outline. I will talk first uh, my motivation and challenge. Then I will describe the load monitoring and how many times are load monitoring are there. I will define them intrusive and non-intrusive load monitoring. And finally, I will analyze deep learning based non-intrusive load monitoring problems. And at the end, I will talk about the analysis results. Now, the Peter Norwich, the Google's director of research, said that we don't have better algorithms than anyone else. We just have more data. So this inspiring statement shows that having more data is directly related to better decision making and having foresight about the future. And with the development of IoT technology, now achieving the data is easy. Facebook, Instagram, smartwatches, smartphones are, we can consider them as a data generator. They generate data for each second. So we can say data is cheap and abundant, but knowledge is expensive and scarce. And when we shift the focus to the energy fields, we can easily see that the smart meters are the data gener generators of the electricity sector. And we can say smart meter infrastructure has been developed in many countries, especially for European Union, Union countries. They, their target is wide scale rollout of smart meters, at least 80% of the cons consumers. And so it means we can say that the widespread use of them means that the access to consumer power readings increases exponentially. Although smart meters are called smart, and they might not be smart enough because generally they share the data only with the utility site for each 15 minutes. However, we can share also this data with the consumers, with the customers. For example, we can reflect the instantaneous consumption on in-home displays. So in this way, Previous studies shows that if we give a feedback to the customers about their instantaneous energy consumption, they can make more smart decisions and they can save electricity around 20%. It's a huge percent, I think. So our research question was, is it possible to make contribution in the energy field by effectively using this data? Now let's talk about load monitoring. Uh, it is monitoring energy consumption and activity of households, factories, naval vessels, and other type of buildings. So with the help of load monitoring techniques, we can obtain real-time or statistical information about appliances or devices. For example, their usage frequency, the, their energy consumption rate, their energy consumption value, usage time in a week, in a day, etc. can be easily obtained. So we can divide load monitoring technique into two. The first one is intrusive load monitoring, which means we need to step into the house and we need to allocate one sensor for each appliances. It means television, washing machine, dishwasher, they have all one sensor. So in this way, we can achieve high accuracy results. We can follow them, we can monitor them, we can remit, remotely control them easily. But there are several disadvantages of them. Since we use a lot of sensor, it's a high cost system. So at the same time, we need a data center to collect the data and we need a communication infrastructure and it needs maintenance and updating. So it needs a lot of things, I mean. 
So it's high cost system. In addition, there is a data privacy problem because we directly intrusively monitor the, all the loads inside the home. So as an alternative, a non-intrusive load monitoring approach is proposed. Also, this is called as energy desegregation. So in this technique, rather than using an individual sensor for each appliances, we use the smart meter data, total energy consumption data of the entire household. We get this, we get smart meter data, and this data, also we call it aggregated data, is analyzed by various signal processing or pattern recognition methods to obtain appliance level disaggregated data. These two terms are important. Aggregated data means smart meter data, total energy consumption of the house. Disaggregated data means appliance level energy consumption data. For example, as you can see from the figure here, the chart above on the top shows us the aggregated data. We have only this data for non-intrusive load monitoring. And by using this some kind of filter, we can call it NILM filter. So we are trying to obtain appliance level energy consumption data. As you can see in the figure from the smart meter data, we obtain electric heater, microwave and fridge data one by one. So how it works, we just read the data by using smart meter and we analyze it by nil. So afterwards, either we can show this or we can share this data with the customers through in-home displays or we can take several actions such as home energy management system, appliance based load forecasting, demands, site management, etc. And so with, if we implement a successful NIL analysis, we have two results. We can have two results. The first one is load identification, means we can understand which loads, which loads are active now, which are not. The second one is energy consumption estimation. And by using this, we can understand which appliance consume how much how much energy. So the first academic study done in 1992, although many years have passed since the first study, we can say, I think the desired level of success hasn't been achieved yet. But especially nowadays with the wide scale rollout of smart meter, now the studies again gain speed. In order to address the NILM problem, appliances need to be classified. As you can see in the figure, we can classify them into three classes. Type per appliances have only two states. They are on and off, and during that period, they consume constant energy. For example, such as toaster and kettle. And type K appliances have multi-state. They saw their energy consumption is not constant changing depending on the states. For example, we can say washing machine. It has different states, washing, drying, and something. So for each state, they have different energy consumption. And the last one, type three, has a variable consumption and it is not a systematically addresses, addresses because, for example, we can consider the drill. Their energy consumption is not constant, always variable, based on the consumer's behavior. Then now I will talk about deep learning based NILM analysis. Also NILM analysis can be done through machine learning, but for machine learning, we need to do hand engineering. What is hand engineering? We need to read smart meter data first. Then we need to detect the event by ourselves without any help. We need to extract some features and then afterwards we can classify them. But this hand engineering process is a time consuming process and nobody knows which feature 
is more, more effective for the analysis of nil. So we need to spend a lot of time. But considering deep learning, all hand engineering and classification is combined into one network. So with the help of this network, we don't need any more to feature extraction. So it to do it in an automated way. So we just get the results at the end of the analysis. So there are two types of deep learning approaches. One is CNN and the other one, one is convolutional neural networks and the other one recurrent neural networks. Uh, con convolutional neural networks, especially famous in the image processing area, the secret behind the CNN is their ability to extract the features hierarchically. So it has really great success on the image processing field. The second one, recurrent neural networks, has the capacity to analyze time series problems. So it has a memory. So thanks to its memory, it can analyze the current and future data based on the past data. So it's perfectly matches with the NILM problem. So in this paper, we proposed this network. Firstly, we read the smart meter data on the top. Then we analyze this data with a CNN layer. CNN layer helps us to extract the feature quality features. Then afterwards, the output of CNN is given to the GRU. GRU is a sub-model of, of RNN. So it has the capacity to analyze longer time sequences. So it's, it shows better performance than RNN, we can say. Then afterwards, the output of GRU is given to a dense layer or fully connected layer. And at the end, we can identify the loads. In this paper, we did a load identification. When we have a look to literature, when we look to literature, we can see the authors train one model for each appliances. So if we consider there are at least 20 appliances in a home, so 20 different models should be trained. So it's a huge time because even one model is trained maybe sometimes one day, maybe 12 hours, something. But in our approach, we use a multi-level classification. It means this model has the capability to analyze more than one appliance with a single deep learning model. Yes. And the input, as you can, as you can see in the figure, we have input here. For NILM analysis, the most important factor is the input types. In the literature, generally, people and authors use the active power because it's commonly available for smart meters. And also, other than this, they can use reactive power, voltage current, and harmonics, but it needs more higher frequency resolution. So, for example, harmon harmonics especially is not available with smart meters. So I think the best choice is using the active power for NILM analysis. So yes, aggregated data is the active power consumption data read from, read from the smart meter. And it's a common feature used in the literature. And extra input spikes can be created by pre-processing of the aggregated data. And by doing this, we inspired from the uh, audio tagging problems because for audio tagging problems they also uh, read the original data and from the original data they create some special features some extra features and they show that they prove that these extra features help to deep learning models to analyze to understand the problem better so we inspired from audio tagging problems so we created an extra feature, we call it, it as spikes. So as you can see from the formula below, we just define the energy consumption changing, increasing edges and decreasing edges. So by doing these two features, one is active power and the other one is spikes, as you can see in the figure, and we analyze them, we analyze them by using the CNN layer and we extract some feature 
and then finally we concatenate them and give to GRU layer. So let's talk about the analysis results. We analyzed six different appliances, bridge, microwave, coffee machine, dishwasher, stove and kettle. And also we analyzed four different deep learning models. One is LSTM, also it's a sub-model, it's a kind of RNN model. And one is GRU, I have, I have already defined it. And the other one, GRU plus convolutional layer and LSTM plus convolutional layer. As you can see from the table one, this one is analyzed with only using active power. So accuracy rates are pretty high and GRU, convolutional GRU is the best model in our experiment. When we use the second features as an input spikes, I mean active power plus spikes, and then when we analyze the results, we can easily see for each appliances, the accuracy rate increases. For fridge, microwave, dishwasher and kettle, it's slightly improved because their accuracy were already high. But we realized that for coffee machine, because it was hard to analyze because coffee machine works only one minute. So it's hard to analyze it. But when we define the spikes and we give as a second input to the deep learning model, we can see here also coffee machines accuracy rates increases importantly. Yes, so we can say that this spice can help to analyze as well the short time operating appliances. And let's have a look to analyze results in the figure. The first line is first chart is aggregated data or smart meter data, active power. And the second one, the microwave status and the third one is dishwasher status. So we multiply the blue, sorry, the blue line is the ground truth and the yellow line is prediction. To make it easier to understand the figure, we multiply the ground truth by two. So as you can see here, the model successfully detect which appliance is on, which is not. Yeah, for, for example, between 1000 and 1400 seconds, the aggregated data is somehow easy to analyze because there is not too many aggregation. So the model predicts it's easily, but for between 400 and 700 almost, the aggregated data is complex more than complex. So in this case, it can do some small mistakes, but it is, I think, negligible. So conclusion, in this paper, a multi-label classification for neon based uh, on a two input GRE is presented. The first advantage is multiple appliances can be analyzed at the same time and great, great time saving can be achieved. And the second advantage is to improve the analysis capability of the model with a second input rather than using only the active power. The second input is called spikes, which are obtained using active power data. And the simulation results have proved that a second input slightly improves the analysis results. In addition, it was found that the second input is useful, especially in the analysis of short-term devices. Thank you for your attention. And there is one reviewer question. The question is, can you please discuss the acceptance of any consumer solution for power management by end consumers? It seems the uptake is not good enough, especially if adjustments in the household are required. So we can say about this, there are today, nowadays, there are more than 40 companies doing this job. They provide energy desegregation solutions. Each one do it with their own hardware and software. Some of them directly install their measurement. It's not smart meter, but except in smart meter, they integrate a new measurement system. So most of them use, not most of them, but they use generally a high frequency measurement because with high frequency measurement, it is easier. And some of them also using smart meter signals. So as far as we know, companies offer these solutions and some customers already buy it and use it. So from our point of view, if we want to use it for energy management, home energy management system, we need 
to detect the appliances in high accuracy because it's 60 percent 70 percent accuracy are not enough it should be at least 90 percent it should have at least 90 percent accuracy in this case we can detect the appliances instantly immediately so according to that we can send a signal to plugs and we can control the appliances remotely i think thanks for the question